This video is sponsored by you and your incredibly generous support on Patreon. Help me continue to make videos, get early access to completely ad-free uploads, your name in the credits and more by heading to patreon.com slash writingongames. Thank you so much and now on with the show. I love to build, to put things together, I always have. Whether it's Gunpla, flat pack Furniture, or the very video you're watching right now, the process of creating something out of nothing, piece by piece, has always been deeply satisfying to me. And like many kids I'm sure, this love began with Lego. In line with a certain fellow YouTuber, my experience with these little bricks has less to do with the endless library of expensive, pristine license kits, and more just a big old box filled with random bits and bobs from other packs. What was in there was pure possibility. It didn't matter what I was thinking of. If I had the right combination of shapes and parts, I could create what was in my head. Hell, even if I didn't have those blocks, this in itself would lead to some of the most rewarding projects of all. I have such vivid memories of running through to show my parents the crude approximation of a spaceship I just built. A ridiculous rectangular mess, but my ridiculous rectangular mess. The product of imagination and problem solving. Those two things I perhaps associate most with Lego. Doesn't matter about perfection, just create what's in your head. Simplicity defined. And it's this simplicity that absolutely drives LEGO Builder's journey, recently released on PC and Switch with remarkably limited fanfare after being ported from an Apple Arcade exclusive. You can feel this purity radiating from the very first screen of the game. Contrary to the titles you might normally associate with the LEGO brand in recent years, the endless slew of licensed skins to drape over an identical mechanical framework, here you're just presented a square. You're told to place one block on top of another until the tide washes it away and you start again. It's a quiet, spacious affair that not only teaches you the basic controls of the game, but eases you into its atmosphere as its characters emerge and the titular journey begins to take shape, in a way that led me to a fairly odd realisation, namely that in the few of these games I've played over the years and outside of the occasional button press, resulting in a feature complete sculpture automatically emerging before my eyes in seconds, I can't remember actually building anything in those titles. See, the simplistic brawling and platforming of modern LEGO games could broadly be defined by their technicolor chaos, where kids smash through every little interactable object to be found and marvel at the resulting explosions of pieces. And look, I certainly don't mean this to come across as some moral panicky, what are these games teaching our kids kind of thing. Those games are charming in their own way. But for a series of titles with LEGO featuring so prominently as part of their aesthetic identity, it says a lot that a game sitting me down and asking me to actually construct something rather than tear it apart felt so novel, so refreshing to me. And it's not like you're building a one-to-one -one recreation of the Sistine Chapel or anything. It's all super simple structures and pathways because you're not playing as master builders here. Instead, the surprisingly heartfelt little narrative, delivered entirely without words, sees our guardian figure simply trying to teach a kid how to solve various puzzles with blocks in order to navigate this weird world itself hazy and dreamlike, a minimalist blur of shapes and rules. There isn't much logic as to how one screen leads to another. Our characters aren't even built of the more humanoid pieces you'd expect of people in a Lego world. They lack facial features or much of anything, and yet they remain delightfully expressive. It's all indicative of a world as viewed through the eyes of a child, a world that hasn't been so clearly defined, where there's still a sense of wonder as to how it all works. It's pure potential. When a rock face crumbles underneath our characters, there isn't a rush to escape the situation. Instead, the guardian stomps and breaks off even more of the small pillar they're precariously balancing on, giving the kid a chance to figure out the way ahead. What should be a perilous situation in this low stakes Lego world world becomes an opportunity for creativity, for excitement and connection. And then you realise, Builder's Journey has managed to capture everything I talked about so enthusiastically at the start of this piece, simplicity and imaginative problem solving. More so than any other game bearing the brand name, Builder's Journey is Lego to me, 
Just like the beauty of those squared edges of your building materials lies precisely in the fact that you could rarely get anything looking totally perfect, the beauty of Builder's Journey comes from how it lets your imagination fill in the blanks. It very much taps into that joy of being a kid again, of being able to look at a few small pieces on the floor and envisioning some elaborate castle. The visual building blocks, for lack of a better term, might be simple, but this doesn't stop the environments and the stories they tell from being vibrant and varied. Clear tiles peacefully flow and glisten as a shimmering stream, juxtaposed with stop-motion-esque bubbling swamps, later seeing you tumble into the dark, dingy depths of the industry that seemingly controls this world. An unknown entity calling people to work, taking that joy, the colour of creativity, and grinding it down to a repetitive lever-pulling exercise. The blocks you work with now grey and jagged, reminiscent of some kind of fossil fuel. Instead of that feeling that you've created anything meaningful, you're given a gold star and expected to feel satisfied with that. There's nothing you can build on top of these, their possibility, their potential entirely removed. All that from some simple blocks. And I think this is why the story of passing on the joy of creativity to the next generation hit me as surprisingly hard as it did. It made me remember that joy because so much is left to interpretation. Of course it definitely helps that the game looks as utterly stunning as it does. It's clear that the simplicity of the game's visual palette, despite being built for phones originally, wasn't a result of hardware limitations, but of vision, behind which lies some truly astonishing tech, at least on PC, with ray tracing casting such wonderful light on these blocks, leading to what is definitely up there as one of the best looking games I think I've played. And now we're in the next generation of consoles, you're probably hearing that phrase a lot right now, but I actually think it's true in this case. I'm not sure YouTube can will do this footage justice, but just look at it. I don't know that I've seen a game look as convincingly photorealistic as this. At the very least, it represents an incredible marriage between a game's aesthetic vision and the tech used to back it up. Given the ray tracing especially, it really makes me wonder why the big console players outside of Nintendo didn't snatch this one up. It's a visual masterpiece, and the newer machines can handle the technology. Even past its absence on consoles though, I'm surprised surprised at how little I've seen this game talked about generally. I had no idea about it until an errant demo of the lighting tech popped up in my recommended feed a few weeks back. At the very least, on a visual level, I feel like I should be seeing way more talk about this game than I am. I really do think it's a spectacular achievement. That said, thinking more critically, I guess this radio silence might come down to the fact that as an actual game, Builder's Journey isn't perfect. The camera controls aren't exactly what I'd call flexible, seeing as it's all designed to be viewed from that one isometric perspective, making it difficult to get an angle on which blocks you might have at your disposal. It's a problem exacerbated by the surprisingly finicky controls for manoeuvring pieces. Trying to line up that one tile in the exact spot you need it is imprecise in a way that I didn't expect, leading to a lot of fumbling, turning, and throwing bricks across the screen by accident. You know, given the simplicity of the diorama you're presented with here, and for a game this short, the experience should feel a whole lot smoother than this. And annoyingly, these problems are not merely a matter of control, but of design. Across the hour or two it will take you to beat, the way these puzzles are paced is inconsistent to say the least, veering wildly between step-by-step, -step, place this block here affairs to move the story along, to occasionally fairly satisfying and challenging little brain teasers, through to scenarios where you can more or less stumble into to a solution by clicking randomly. It's just complicated enough at times, requiring a modicum of patience and a surprising amount of lateral thinking to progress, as well as some scenarios that feel completely arbitrary as to what pieces you can move around versus those that are just part of the environment, that despite its child-friendly look, I'm not sure I could recommend this to younger players without supervision. To do so seems like a recipe for frustration. But then again, as much as this might seem counterintuitive given the branding, I don't necessarily think this game is wholly meant for children. I don't know that its impact will be so keenly felt by those younger players. I very much envision the builder of the game's title as the guardian
guardian figure as much as the youngster. The older generation is just at a different point of their journey. They've been through it all, they've experienced this joy, they've learned how to make things, and as explored in seemingly any toy-related media franchise that's run for long enough, including Lego films now that I think about it, they now have to try and pass this knowledge on to the next generation in a world that seeks to crush the childlike wonder within us all, in order that they can keep that cinder of joy and hope alive. You know, kids don't need this game to discover the joy of LEGO, of creating things and using their imaginations to see the potential in the everyday world. They have actual physical LEGO, and more importantly, time for all of that. This game is for adults, wearied of the world's monotony, to bring us back to a time where we weren't so painfully aware of life's indifference, to present us with renewed perspective so that we may see that potential in things once more. Like our crude approximations of spaceships and whatever else we'd throw together as kids, Builder's Journey is far from perfect but it's evocative enough that I'm more than willing to look past its blemishes and cherish the vision underneath. So I hope you all enjoyed this piece on LEGO Builder's Journey. This video marks the six year anniversary of my very first upload to this channel, and it's beyond wild to think it's been that long. Thank you so much to everyone who has watched, liked, and commented on a video, subscribed, told someone about the channel, checked out the podcast, or anything else. Most importantly, thank you to my patrons. There is no way I would ever have been able to reach this point were it not for your unbelievably generous support. I am so grateful for that. If you've enjoyed any of the videos I've put out and want to help the channel continue so I can keep making more, you can directly help out as well as get things like early access to ad-free video uploads and new patron-exclusive commentaries on older videos by heading to patreon.com slash writingongames and pledging only what you feel comfortable with. I am forever thankful for your support in whatever form it takes. Special thanks go to Mark B. Writing, Artyom Vitsyuk, Shardfire, Spike Jones, Jesse Ryan, Dallas Keen, Timothy Jones, Charlie Kimball, Tom Webster, Tommy Carver, Chaplin, Winter, David Bjork, Lucas, Bryce Snyder, Dr. Motorcycle, The Nameless Guy, Henry Milek, Kibi Amori, Leah Cinello, Ruth Knapman, Nicholas Villeneuve, Captain Knusbrick, Danis Sikowskis, Jordan Midler, Max Cohen, and Charlie Yang. And with that, this has been another episode of Writing on Games. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you all next time.